Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'll be in Lightroom Classic playing with a photo and I'm gonna be dead honest, it's a boring photo. I like the idea of the photo, the composition of the photo, but it's lacking any kind of drama or interest. It's really flat, really boring. But the cool thing is, of course, in Lightroom, there are so many amazing tools that you can use to amp up the drama and take a boring photo that's really flat and almost lifeless and turn it into something much more interesting and uh, kind of uh, kind of vibrant, if you will. So this is the photo that we're talking about. This is in the Tate London. This was a number of years ago. Uh, that's my daughter. I didn't catch a person walking there. Uh, I posed her. It was an empty spot. I was waiting for someone to go by, and nobody did. So I was like, hey, why don't you go stand over there? So I posed her like that. But as you can see, it's fairly flat. It's kind of boring. Again, I like the idea of the photo. I like the curve of the staircase. I like the curve of the handrail. I like her position. I like these signs on the wall that are kind of stair-stepping up. I like this um, arrow here. Everything's kind of pointing up and kind of curving, but it's flat, boring, and just not really that great of a shot. So I had a play in Lightroom, and I turned it into that. And it took a little bit of work, but it was simple, easy steps that allowed me to almost effortlessly take something that's fairly flat and boring, turn it into something way more interesting. That's what we're doing in this video. Let me hit reset and we'll get started. Now, by the way, I've got a 17 page ebook all about editing in Lightroom Classic. It's available for free at the link down below if you wanna check that out. It's full of tips, tricks, and ideas about how to use Lightroom to get the best editing results. Feel free to check that out if you'd like to. Now, one of the things I talk about in that ebook is I always start in basic and for me, I think that's pretty straightforward. I'm sure everybody does, but what I wanna do is start by darkening the photo and adding contrast. As you saw from the final result, I'm definitely amping up the drama here and creating a mood that frankly didn't really exist, but that's okay, that's fun. Uh, that's part of the fun of editing. I'm gonna apply texture and I don't always do texture and clarity across the entire photo, but in this case, interior architecture, kind of flat, I'm amping up that feel and that drama, and that's just the way it works. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna drop that temperature quite a bit. So I'm dropping it, it was at 3300, it's going a little over 3000 now, and I'm gonna leave tint the same. So already, before and after, as you can see, we've made pretty much some significant progress without uh, even leaving develop. That's why I always start there, or I should say basic. It's just really powerful, really straightforward, easy to use, and for me, that's the first step. And step two is really multiple steps, and that is using masks to control light and color. Now, as you saw in the final result, light and color are manipulated significantly, and it might seem like a lot of work, but it's not. It's easy, it's not using fancy masks. It's just some straightforward stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the masking panel, and I'm gonna start with a subject mask. And this does a pretty good job. As you can see, it finds her, but it also picks up the railing and some of this here. And at first I was gonna erase that, which you can do with subtract and then brush, but I decided not to. I'm just gonna leave it, and it actually, uh, I think, works fine. Now with a subject, I, I generally wanna brighten the subject, make them a bit more visible, and that's usually the exposure slider and sometimes clarity. So I'm gonna go ahead and kinda of double up on clarity here, about 14 or 15. And if you look at the before and the after, I kind of like what it does to this uh, kind of concrete railing, even though at first I thought, ooh, subject mask didn't really nail it. But I think it works out fine. Now, of course, a big, big component of masking, in fact, the major component of masking is shape in the light. Again, you saw the final result, you know where we're going, uh, but there's a few things I do. And again, these are simple masking tools. And the second one I'm gonna use after subject mask is a linear gradient. And that is because I need to frame the subject a little bit. And framing and highlighting the subject for me is a big, big part of what this masking is gonna do for me. So I'm starting with that linear gradient and I'm just gonna drop that uh, like a negative 50 something. So all I'm trying to do is frame it and darken the edges because as you can see, the edges are pretty bright. The whole scene was bright. Um, and the whole scene was kind of yellow, which I didn't really like. We're gonna change colors, of course, here in a minute because the two kind of pronged approach that I have for adding drama and mood and kind of enhancing all that is light and color because shifting those two in a photo can significantly make a huge uh, huge impact on your photo. So again, this linear gradient before and after, I think that looks great. And while we're at it, we're gonna get another linear gradient. And if you guessed it's gonna be this corner, you're right. I'm essentially creating a vignette to some degree. It's not covering the entire photo, 
but I'm darkening some of the edges. Uh, and we'll talk about a vignette here in a little bit, but this one is going to get actually more dark than the other one. And that's because it's uh, it's quite a bit brighter and a bit, bit more visibility there. But also, I feel like because it's so bright over here, it kind of distracts from that staircase and the shape and that kind of curve going up. If, if it's not clear, then uh, I want to point this out. When you have a subject and you're trying to draw attention to them, light does that very well. And you want to remove... Uh, distracting elements of the photo by darkening them effectively, right? That's what I'm doing here. It's dodging and burning. It's masking for light. There's a 50 ways to describe what I'm doing. But if you look at the before, it's really distracting that bright blue glass in that corner. We're going to do something else on that in a minute. But that whole corner is really bright. And now it's quite a bit darker, a bit more muted, and therefore um, less visible. And therefore it doesn't draw the viewer's eye quite as much. So I think that's good. Uh, and then the, the big piece here is really a radial gradient to really draw in on that subject. So I need to set this up. And this takes a couple of minutes of just trying to get this right and making it big and expansive and covering the subject without kind of overdoing things. And um, I, I recommend experimenting and going slow. And the nice thing is, is you can put your masks in place and then come back make some adjustments to them after you've made adjustments to the sliders, which I may need to do. So first I'll move these sliders around and uh, I'm drawing, uh, basically creating more light there. The light is coming through the ceiling, but I'm making it pop a bit more. I'm going to take contrast down 100. Notice how that kind of adds a glow. If you look at that, regular contrast, negative 100, it, it lightens the area, creates a little bit of a glow, which I like because it kind of leans into that brightening that I'm doing. I'm going to bump up the whites a little bit, and then I'm also going to bump up temperature and tint. Uh, so just a little bit of a bump in temp and a little bit of bump in tint as well. And all I'm doing is just creating a little bit of warmth because it's brighter. Actually, let me rephrase that. I'm creating a little bit of brightness, uh, and I'm adding some warmth because brighter stuff is warmer, right? It's the source of light or illumination in the photo. So you can see what I'm doing here before and after. I think that light looks good. And then this is what I was talking about. You can come back and make adjustments as necessary to uh, something like a radial mask. You can adjust your feathering if you want to. I think it's pretty fine like that. Uh, and then you can adjust the length if you need to. Um, every photo is different, of course. But let me show you what we've done with masking. So before all the masks, which are four, pretty simple stuff. Pop the subject. Uh, darken the corners uh, and then draw the light in on the subject coming from the ceiling. But before the masks and after the mask, honestly, it's, it's massively different. And the before uh, of the photo overall so far, very bright, really washed out, really kind of yellow. Now darker, moodier, a bit more drama. I feel like we're getting there, but now we need to go play with color. So if you've been here before, or if you check out that ebook that I talked about, you'll know that calibration is my fa favorite color tool um, in many apps. This is uh, by far one of the best color tools there is. And what I want to do is definitely my favorite in Lightroom. And I want to go play with the hue and the saturation. So what I'm going to do is drag the saturation of the blue. And I don't really know why I get into the habit of starting with blue, but I tend to start with blue. Uh, well, I, I kind of do know. Uh, it really comes down to I just like what it does to a photo. It's a great way to kind of draw this orange and teal kind of look out of a photo by increasing saturation and dragging the hue to the left. It does a great job of kind of popping those, uh, those colors. So if you look at the before and the after, nice little bit of warmth here on my subject, which I think looks kind of awesome. Next up, I'm going to get the hue and the saturation of the green. So I ended up going to about a 60 and these numbers, they, maybe they seem kind of high, but every image is different. So you just experiment and play around. But I really like the look of these colors here. So before and after. Now, my daughter does have red hair, but that's getting really red. We're going to fix that in a minute. It's really simple to do with another Lightroom tool. But I'm not done here. And that's because I want to go into the shadows. And I want to add a little bit of this magenta tint. I'm kind of leaning into some of those warmer kind of looks. And it just gives a nice overall look and feel to the photo, I think. So before calibration, pretty muted colors overall, kind of blah, way better light because of all the masking we did, but the colors weren't really there. And now with calibration, those colors are starting to shine. I love it. And I think it's coming around, but there are a couple things I need to go fix. The first one is her hair. So I'm going to go grab that 
And while her hair is red, it's nothing like that. So I want to take that saturation down. I don't want it to be like an over the top, maybe drop the luminance a little bit, maybe uh, make it a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more red-ish, but a little bit less saturated. Again, every photo is different to each his or her own, but that's just kind of how I like the look there. If you look at the hair before, way too over the top, and now a bit more muted. I think that looks better. And while I'm at it, this blue over here is just too bright. And so that's the beauty of this point color. If you're not using point color, highly recommended. I talk about it in my ebook, but I want to come in and I want to take that saturation down and that luminance down. And it really helps me isolate that and draw attention away from that brighter section of the photo. So if you look at color mixer overall, before really bright over there, her hair way too red, and now a lot more muted, darker over there. I just think that looks so much better. And that's why color mixer is so powerful. And that's also why Color Mixer goes so well with calibration. I use them in combination all the time because calibration does some amazing things to colors, but you can't mask it. So it sometimes gets a little too much in certain places. Come back with Color Mixer, just uh, you know, point and click, if you will, with point color, and you're, you're set and off and running. Now there's one more thing I want to do with color, and that is going to color grading. And on a photo like this, there's two things I really want to accentuate. I'm not going to mess with the midtones, but I do want to lean into what I'm doing in the highlights and also lean into what I'm doing in the shadows. So I'm going to start with highlights, which is this uh, wheel here. And my hue goes to, you know, about a 30 or so, which is kind of in the warm colors. So let's stop about there. And saturation, maybe a 10 or 12. I don't, I don't want to go too high. I've got a 9. I think that's fine. All I'm doing is taking primarily here in the center and on the subject where I accentuated that light and I'm just making it a little bit warmer. So before, a little bit more muted and after, a little bit more warm. Not a crazy over the top, just a little bit of a nudge in that direction. And then shadows, I'm doing essentially the opposite. For me, shadows by definition should be darker and cooler and that's what we do uh, and can do so well with color grading. So I'm going to come in and my number for shadows is usually around a 230. That's the number that I like around the blues. Uh, I'm going to increase the saturation into the 40s. So something like low 40s. And I'm going to take this luminance down quite a bit. Um, again, I'm just kind of playing into the color moves that I made. Maybe a little bit less on the saturation. I don't want to overdo it. But I'm just darkening those shadows and cooling them off. And so what I'm doing here is accentuating what I did with the light uh, earlier and with the colors, right? So the highlights brighter and warmer, shadows darker and cooler. So before and after. And this plays in really well with a theme I talked about in that video, which was really about sunsets. But in that video, I talked about color tension and that color contrast that I like to play up in my edits. You can do it so well and so easily in Lightroom with moves like this. But that color tension or color contrast that I'm talking about is uh, playing the warm colors and the cool colors off of each other and creating kind of that tension in your image. Check out that video if you want to learn more about that. But you can see before and after color grading, huge impact on the photo. It really helps to kind of sell this transformation, for lack of a better term. And in terms of selling it, the final move is really just going in and creating a vignette. I'm just kind of leaning in a little bit further to what I've done with the shadows and the highlights and all these different kind of moves that I've been making. Uh, and so I'm adjusting the midpoint and the roundness. Uh, and then my feathering is usually around 100. And if uh, if you take a look at the before and after vignette, so before and after further kind of darkens those edges, helps me over here with that blue in those windows, but I think has a nice impact on the photo overall, before and after. And now if you take a look at the entire photo before and after, it's uh, almost unrecognizable. I mean, clearly... Composition-wise, I think it uh, it works really well. It's clearly the same photo, no cropping, no straightening. Somehow I got it straight without um, uh, having to do that. I usually have to straighten my photos, but bright, kind of yellow, washed out. I love the idea of the photo. Didn't like where I was, uh, the kind of the colors or the light, and being able to make those adjustments in Lightroom quickly and easily with masking tools, color tools you can turn something that's fairly boring and flat into something that's moody, dramatic, and it's easy, very easy to do in Lightroom. That's my video for today, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. Hope it inspires you to try some of these things. Check out my ebook if you haven't. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And, uh, you know, hey, have a good time editing your photos. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more stuff like this. 
have a good one. Take care of yourselves out there, my friends. Be safe, be careful, and uh, have fun editing. I'll see you next time. And until then, adios.